So it looks like all the students are ready. I took up my three minutes and here they are. So uh, are you ready, Sensei Reese? Okay, please march them into the into the room. Everybody give them a round of applause. this way. adults and family here, we have faced hardships in our life. They're going to face hardships as well. We want them to be prepared for all those hardships um, and so that they can do well. Um, uh, mostly what they have to do is become the best version of themselves. So it's not just about learning skills, but it's about who they become. And that's why we're a character and leadership development school. Uh, so we see that they're on this path and that they're doing very well. I'm really excited about the energy that we have in the school now, and you can see this in their excitement, in the joy, joy that they have for life, just in their performance. I think you're going to see all of that. Uh, so tonight is about them, what they've accomplished, uh, what they have to look forward to, and what guidance we're going to provide them. So let's give them another round of applause. Without getting into a whole lot of detail, we live in balls of times, and 
I, I have three quotes that I would like to give you and then speak briefly about them. So the first quote comes from Master Gishin Funakoshi. If you've been at the dojo, his picture is up on the wall. He's considered to be the father of modern day karate. He wrote uh, 20 precepts or a book called the Nijuku. Niju means 20, Kun means belief or creed. And one of them, the number 16, is the one we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about here tonight. So be aware at all times that you have millions of potential opponents. Now, I believe that Master Funakoshi is telling us that we can be harmed in millions of different ways. And if we must be aware of them if we're going to uh, be able to address them or handle them. So he's not saying that we have to be freaked out by all these things. So yeah, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. But um, we don't have to be freaked out by this. We just have to be aware of it and then be ready to take steps. Um, if we're not aware, then we're going to be harmed. So that means that as martial artists, we have to take an interest in people, animals, plants, bacteria, viruses. You may have heard those, coronavirus, CR virus, chemicals, weather, natural disasters. And we need to study to some extent every topic imaginable. Sociology, psychology, medicine, sciences, engineering, real estate, banking, economics, business, and on and on. We have to make ourselves aware of these things. Now, obviously, this is not going to happen in a day or two. This takes a lifetime of endeavor, but that's, that's the way uh, I certainly approach things in my life. I've been doing this for 52 years. So we need to learn all we can about life and all we can about these potential opponents that we might be facing. Uh, the next quote is from Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is the author of the, a book called The Book of the Art of War. This book was written about 2,500 years ago. It's still widely read by um, people, many people in many different fields even now. So the quote I have here is, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. So I believe what he's saying there is that if we're aware of all these things and we know ourselves, we don't have to sweat it. We don't have to worry about it. We just have to take the steps we need to do to, to handle it. And if you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory you gain, you will also suffer a defeat. And then if you neither know the enemy nor yourself, you will lose every time. So that's, he's telling us how important it is that we know ourselves and we know these potential enemies that are out there. Now, the, the last quote that I'd like to uh, speak to you about is also from Sun Tzu, and he says that the skillful fighter puts himself in a position that makes defeat impossible and does not miss the moment for defeating the enemy. In other words, the skillful fighter is not going to expose themselves in some way or another, and they're going to keep themselves safe, and at the moment that they need see that something can be done, they do it and they don't waste any time. Uh, thus it is that in war, the victorious strategists, now listen to this, only seek battle after the victory has been won. Whereas he who is destined to defeat fights first and afterward look for victory. So how can this possibly be? How is it possible that you win first before you go to the battle, you go into battle. Well, you win first by seeing victory in your mind, having a clear picture of what you want to see happen. And when you have that picture clearly in your mind, then you can take the steps to do what you need to do. So my suggestion is that you as, as families and members of our school and our students, that you study these, these quotes thoroughly as well as the other ones, um, I, most of you should be getting our family education uh, material that we're sending out to you. We just uh, dropped it the, the November one in the mail uh, yesterday. Um, so please look at that stuff and study those things because as Sun Tzu says, war is a matter of life or death. So if you understand these concepts, it's going to improve your life and the lives of your children dramatically. Okay, I think we're ready to perform. So. Uh, Hold yourself in natural stance. Put your left leg forward, make forward stance. Fight! Fight! Step in, punch to the upper body. Each knee and ki. Sunk. Step back, rising block. 
H, knee, and P.I. Sun. Back down to forward stance, stepping in outside forearm block. H, knee, and P.I. Sun. Stepping back down block. H, knee, and P.I. Sun. Holding your arms to your side. Rear leg front snap kick, stepping forward. Each knee and ki sup. Turn. Each knee and ki sup. Turn. Yame. Johnny Coleman, he is receiving his yellow belt. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sebastian, and he's receiving his orange belt.
Eden. Eden is receiving step five, a tip stripe on his orange belt.
Next up is Stephen. And Stephen is receiving.
First up is Ron, who's receiving his green belt. Next up is Mandel, who's receiving his, uh, his orange belt with a tip strike.
Leo is receiving a black kid stripe on his <laughs>
first up is Shireen Sherpa, who is receiving a tip stripe on her brown belt. Advancing when students get to this rank of brown belts, uh, the exams become much more difficult and uh, the students don't pass every time around. So um, the next person that we have that, that has passed this exam here is Victor Coto, who has earned step number three. Who passed his first degree black belt test in April? Woo! 